Okay, let's have a look at how to populate your Instagram analytics spreadsheet. Quick note, you can only get these analytics from the Instagram mobile app. If you don't know where to find it on the mobile app, I've popped a help article here. And note, it cannot be a personal account, so it has to be a business or creator account in order to track our analytics. Let's have a look at our spreadsheet, but we're going to record the date. You need to make sure you keep the date format all in sync, the week number. So we will eventually get up to 52 weeks. If you do start in the middle of the year, you could start at week 13, 14, whatever out of the 52. That's what we want to have a look at here. Our topics or our content bucket. So each um, piece of content should fall into one of your content buckets. Then a little snippet of what the post was about. Plays like comments, shares and saves. Profile activity. So this is um, somebody viewed your profile or clicked a link, took action within. And then we look at the accounts reached. The number of followers who weren't following us, the actual total number of followers on our account, engagement rate, um, the total engagement rate, including saves, depending on whether you measure that or not. And I would suggest to go with this one over it. And we, we're going to look at it more. And our engagement goal. So everybody's engagement goal is going to be different. But it, this will allow you to get your base of your engagement so you can get an engagement goal. Okay, so if we have a look here, this is from the professional dashboard within the Instagram profile. So over here, we have a look at the period that we're looking here and you can always change it up here. The accounts reached. So Instagram will automatically give you a plus or minus on how your performance is doing on this end. But for our total followers for this week or this period, we're going to click in here and then you get the actual number because if the lower number you have here, it will give you the full number like 1860. But if that was 18,600, you will see 18.6. And that's where you need to drill in here to get your number. So for that number, you're going to pop it over here into column M. So that is what will help. It will help determine how our engagement is doing. All right. So next, we're going to have a look at a post. Gone too far. Go back one. Okay, so here we have reels. So reels and posts look very different. So here we have 17,740 plays, 299 likes, 26 comments, 76 shares, and 72 saves. We see here the real interaction. So this is the number of interactions that somebody had with the reel. And then we look at here, the reach is broken down into followers and non-followers. This post is not the norm. Normally, your followers are always super heavy compared to your non-followers. So non-followers is when you can end up on the Explore tab. The hashtag has some reach. Could have gone viral, essentially. So that will be 1% of your post. It's never going to look like this. Um, and then we can see a real interaction. So all of that is just this broken down here. So then we come over here. So I'm putting in the details. So Behind the scenes, it was a reel of M Skull. Here's our plays, likes, comments, shares, saves. Profile activity is not valid for reels. The accounts reached, the not following. And then we come over here. So this is automatically calculated for you. So it turns green if you met your goal. And if you want to change this, you just come over to format, conditional formatting. And then we have it just applied to this range and I have it here with greater than 2.5, it turns green. So you can easily make modifications to that deter, deter, depending on the engagement goal. So this is the real engagement goal. I would actually look at the one including saves because saves is super important and it's just as valid to anything, if not more valid in my opinion, because while I might not like and comment on your post, I will save it if I want to watch it later. So that's where that comes in there. So that's what a reel will look like. Then we just come back to our notes here. Let's have a look at a page post. So this looks slightly different on the back end. So you see the post interactions, the likes, the shares, the saves, the comments. And this is where you get to see the profile activity. So this means somebody's seen your post, 
and they went to view your profile, they followed you or they clicked the link in bio. So this is always really good to know. And this also goes to show we put so much effort into our grid sometimes and all that kind of stuff. And the this number is never really high. It's more people will only ever see your grid. So it's like a few times in the duration of following you or their like think about think about when you look at yourself, you do not go and view somebody's grid. So putting an effort into super aesthetic covers, all that kind of stuff that makes it look a certain way just isn't isn't worth it for the the handful of times that somebody will actually go visit your profile. So here you see, like we looked at a second ago, accounts engaged, followers to non-followers, which is totally normal. And then this is a great one just to know for yourself. And again, only on posts, not on reels. So how people found it from home, from profile, from explore, from other. So from profile, so they were on your profile, they ended up there and then they clicked into the post. And then from the explore, the explore feed, that's um, one where you kind of get on when you're suggested content to other people. So you'll know when you're on your own explore page. And then from other can be other people sharing your content. And again, you see the difference here. So education topic, when to get Botox, plays. So plays is obviously not a thing for post. Um, so no comments, share saves, profile activity nine. Because then this is how you will obviously compare profile activity on post to each other and the same with the reach. But you don't compare post to reels because it's just not on the same level. And we can see here the engagement rate was just under 1%. Now 1% can be okay. Um, that's kind of the, the standard that some accounts aim for because 1% is actually high, which sounds crazy. But... For our page posts, you'll only know what you know when it comes to your own engagement rate. And then you start to improve because if we're here and we're saying, okay, we're getting this type of engagement rate on our reels and our posts, but we're getting clicks to our website. Each post has a differing, different objective. So this post could have been more trying to get somebody to book an appointment. And this is just more awareness. So don't just go after the fancy numbers because that's not going to work. So you need to have a combination of both. So 1% is totally acceptable for a page post. And here, my other reel, this is, this is crazy engagement rate. This is the, this is not the norm. Don't go out and aim for that. And I would be aiming for, depending on where you're at, like you could have up to a 5% engagement rate if you've got a super active account and the accounts that have the the high engagement rates are tend to be the accounts with lower following because they have a, a higher quality audience. And that's exactly why you don't go and buy followers or anything like that, because it's very easy to tell who bought followers. Because if you go to somebody's account and they have hundreds of thousands of followers, but their engagement is on the floor, that's a red flag. If you are looking to work with an influencer, you don't want to be buying followers it's not worth it nobody cares about the numbers they care about your content and if you care about the numbers you're going after the wrong thing in that instance but what i'm showing you here with the data and the numbers all day long if you've got 200 followers this is applicable to you you've got 200 000 followers it's applicable to you if you want more conversions from your instagram your social media this is the type of stuff that we need to be looking at. And then here for the last one, we have the same here. So we're just pulling from the real likes, comment, sends, oh, saves. And again, we pop them into our spreadsheet for you now. So you can have a look for posting your first one, pop it in here and then go ahead and set. You'll know from your first view, okay, what's my engagement rate? Like I would advise going back a few weeks if you can to be able to see the details so you can see where you're at but you want to be doing this every set day of the week so a Monday Thursday Friday whatever happens to be of the week so you can get the accurate detail from the Instagram app because sometimes if you're trying to go back in time you don't know what your followers were on the day you're it's not so simple to see okay well how have I progressed over the others and then always as you go forward then I love a good insert chart 
and then like you can always put it onto another column and then you can start to see like you this obviously I'm not going to use this one here but you can go ahead and start working on to see trends from what's actually going on here instead of doing it but doing this is so worth it and to be able to see and improve upon what you're doing so definitely recommend it so that's it for now if you have any questions go ahead and pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you